Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and a fair use and fair dealings. Hey everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and you had a nice weekend. Some of you have been asking after my doggies and uh, here's some pictures here for you. We took them to the beach yesterday and it turned into a bit of a sunset walk because the sun is setting as early as 4pm now. But it was a really, really beautiful beach. This isn't too far from where I live and it happens to have my dream house. This house is literally what I would want if I won the lottery. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's a lot bigger than what this photo reflects but it literally faces outwards towards the ocean so that top window in the middle that you can see I would totally have that as my bedroom you have to open the curtains every morning and look out at the ocean I would be in my element every single day but this type of house is a dream house for a reason you are talking millions but hey we've all got to have a dream so on Saturday night, my husband and I went out with my mum and my stepdad. We went out for a nice meal together because it was my stepdad's birthday recently. It was really, really lovely. We know this restaurant really well. The food is absolutely phenomenal. Really, really nice evening. But my favourite bit of the evening was when me and my mum just had that moment where we totally twinned. The owner of the restaurant came round. Now, bearing in mind, this was like 6.15 in the evening by the time we'd finished our meal and we were paying. He said, so are you guys going to go into town now? Go get yourselves a cocktail. My mum and me just looked at each other went <laughs> uh, no um, <laughs> we then paid the bill and left and by 7 15 literally less than an hour later after we were home I thought I'd give my mum a ring and just say look we had a really lovely time literally my mum and me she was like I'm in my pajamas I'm like I'm in my slippers my makeup's been removed yeah me too I'm in my glasses in my pajamas sitting on the sofa watching tv and that was 7 15 on a Saturday night and I was like rock and roll baby rock and roll <laughs> While we were out at dinner though, we were having one of those things where we were talking about going on holiday because as you guys know, whenever I go away anywhere, there's always a story that comes back. And we were just talking about things that happen and you've got to be able to laugh at yourself. And especially me being on social media, there's lots of nasty things that are said about me all the time. And you've got to be able to take it with a pinch of salt. Not always easier said than done, but you know, just, just roll with it and have a bit of a laugh at it. Being able to laugh at yourself is definitely a quality that I think helps you get through life. Being able to make people laugh alongside you is also a quality but there is a fine line with people laughing with you and people laughing at you which is something that I think Megan is probably very much going to regret about doing that Ellen interview. I know I briefly touched on this the other day with Megan sitting there in her very expensive flamenco shirt, ole, but I've spent a bit more time and actually watched the footage of it myself. Now, firstly, there was someone that's actually brought up a very good point. I thought Meghan and Harry were only going to be giving interviews to uh, up and coming grassroots media companies. So far, we've had Oprah, we've now got Ellen, we've had James Corden, Harry speaking to Dax Shepherd. The people that they're speaking to are not exactly grassroots up and coming journalists, are they? So we've obviously the interview being aired in full lots of uh mistruths shall we say have come out yet again as i said in the last video i don't know why she doesn't realize that she's going to get caught out with being caught out with so many lies people begin to analyze you a lot more so every time you tell a story they're gonna look it up and the problem is it never seems to match up to the stories that she's previously told herself, either in interviews or that she's written on her old blog, The Tig, or even Instagram. Nothing ever seems to match. I said, obviously, about the truck story that she was climbing in and out of the boot. Uh, her sister came out and said that's not true. Her own father that actually gave her the car, put gas in the car, also revealed to everyone that that wasn't true. But I think most people have probably worked it out, considering she managed to retell that story in such intimate detail, but could not remember giving the authors of Finding Freedom pages and pages and pages of text messages and emails to help them write the unauthorised hagiography.
Now, the thing with appearing on Ellen, all of the people that go on Ellen, they generally have something to plug. Going on Ellen generally is done by celebrities. It's not like it's a, a deeply emotional reveal story. It's supposed to be fun and lighthearted and pranks and all of the silliness that comes with that show. And more often than not, there is a film to plug, a book to sell. So sure enough, Megan was on there plugging the bench and then also mentioning about the paid family leave. She shared another back headshot of Archie feeding chickens. Again, I've often said this, she is putting a target on that child's head. To say that you want your child to grow up with complete privacy and to be brought up as a normal citizen, don't keep posting pictures of him on worldwide TV. Because she is only showing the back of his head, it means that those photographers, those paparazzi, even just anyone walking down the street are going to want to take the full facial picture of Archie because it will sell for a lot of money. Any shots of them out with baby Lily, any family shots of them actually being out and about would sell for thousands of pounds. They are literally putting a target it on that child's head. We saw the paparazzi shot which Harry was very angry about that had just happened to happen while he was away. <laughs> I wonder when that's happened before. But funny enough, Megan didn't sue the photographers. She didn't look too upset here so I think she was probably in on it. Naturally, Megan was promoting how happy her husband H is in California. Someone might want to inform Harry that when he is photographed and doing videos that he is meant to smile and look a little bit happier. So the bench got plugged and all I can say here is give it up. Anyone that wanted to buy that book, like her fan base, sycophants, whatever, they would have done it by now. They would have bought it when it came up for pre-sales. The fact that she is still trying to push it now, I just think give it up. It was a flop. But the story that she'd said behind it as well just shows that she thinks everyone is just gullible and stupid. The bench reportedly only came about because she shared her deeply personal poem for Harry with several friends. She likes sharing stuff with friends, doesn't she? And those friends actually then turned around and said to her at this amazing piece of poetry that they resonated with it as well, that it felt completely inclusive and the representation was there. What are you talking about? Can you imagine any friend saying that ever? Going, oh yes, that, that deeply cheesy poem about that, you know, that you wrote personally for your husband to do with him being a father resonates with me. It really does. It resonates with the world. Do you know what, Megan? You should make this into a book. The world needs this said no one ever. And again, when we think about the bench, this is supposed to resonate with people all around the world. That's why she made it into a book. But she has completely trashed and vilified her own father. She's also not been particularly pleasant and encouraged Harry's disassociation with his entire family, with his father. All of the things that Charles did, they both completely ignored it in their sob story to the world of their eternal, perpetual victimhood. Even denying the fact that Charles has given them millions and was still given them millions of pounds when they first moved. But no, they were cut off, left to fend for themselves. Let me get my mini violins. Now, speaking of cutting off the family and this picture of Archie, there's just something so sad about this. What I don't understand is Harry has basically said that he wanted to give his child something that he never had. Yeah, he's definitely doing that. He grew up with cousins, with aunties, with uncles, with close family friends and their children. They literally grew up with their entire family around them. Harry's definitely given something Archie never had. He's taken that away from him. It's not just the importance of the great grandparents and the grandparents look at how the Cambridge children are growing up all, all of the royal the young royals are growing up you see them laughing and joking and it's a bond that they're going to have because they're growing up in that environment together they have that support network Archie is growing up without that and I just cannot understand how Harry can do that I can't help but think it was just a very selfish thing to do. I think both of them, a lot of it is sticking their fingers up at their families. But the only people that really suffer there are the children that grow up without that sort of connection. So other things that Megan discussed on this interview with Ellen was the fact 
that she is friends with Princess Yoshini and Jack. And so much so that they went out for the last time together in 2016 before their relationship got exposed. And they went out in fancy dress, just the four of them, wearing, I think she said, some sort of apocalyptic end of the world costumes. Now the issue is here, she's forgotten what she told Omen Scobie in Finding Freedom. They actually went to a Soho house Halloween party where I'm sure lots of people were there in fancy dress and also the fact it was a Venetian themed you know with the masks so people couldn't tell who they were but I'm pretty sure within the Soho house collection of people at that party that night they were very aware of Megan being there with Harry so again it's another story that has just completely been twisted she makes it up as she goes but bearing in mind that we're now very aware that she told the Finding Freedom authors everything that is in that book it makes you think you've literally just been found out a matter of weeks ago and now you're telling Ellen a different version of events <laughs> and another story that came out which did make me chuckle Megan made scrunchies for her schoolmate she sold them yeah there was a story that Doria used to take her to a material shop where she used to buy scraps of material and elastic and she had a sewing machine because Megan comes across as the sort of girl to me that knows how to sew her own clothes but she made these scrunchies to sell at school to her friends now firstly <laughs> selling them rather than giving them to them it's like friendship bracelets and stuff you gave them to your friends but she sold them to her friends just so she could put bread on the table all right I made that last bit up but you get the general gist of it she's still trying to do that I was a little poor girl I was the matchstick girl making scrunchies for the girls at school at my very posh expensive school that my daddy paid for with his lottery wins I'm sorry it's another one I don't believe it Naturally, we had the mention of Baby Lily. Baby Lily is now teething, we were informed. And Megan has barely slept. And she said, you know how hard it is having a baby teething? Yes. Does Megan know how hard it is having a baby teething? And I'm not saying this as I'm attacking her parenting here. But it's actually quite well known that they're living in a huge mansion staff with nannies day nannies night nannies remember they sacked the night nanny quite early on with Archie and I imagine there has been a revolving door with baby Lily as well with nannies I know that she's trying to do it to make herself relatable but it's making my bullshit -o meter go woo <laughs> not helped by her sentence that she came out with not long after mentioning the children where she said someone told H and I that when you have one kid it's a hobby. When you have two kids, it's parenting. And no one apparently talks about the adjustment of the first child when they have a sibling. <laughs> okay, where do we start with this one? Right, number one. <laughs> I don't know any parent and most of my friends and family members, cousins and that, their parents. And I have never in all of my 38 years on this earth heard any of them refer to their child as being a hobby. This makes me think that they have got lots of nannies. So one day, Megan and Harry go, what are we going to do today? Do you want to go out for lunch? Do you want to go, go play some polo? Maybe we should just jump in and go see the kid for a bit. That would make it a hobby. Do. No one talks about the adjustment of the first child, like talking about breastfeeding is taboo. I don't believe this for an absolute second. Many of my friends discuss the problems that they're going to face. And even my next door neighbour has a baby due. And we stood on the doorstep talking about the adjustments that her first child might have. It's literally normal conversations that people have up there with when you have different features with mummy and daddy, what the baby might look like. She literally talks about anything to do with the kids like she is the first woman that ever became pregnant, that ever gave birth. But with everything that she said there, that was not what made worldwide headline news. No, it's what the Duchess did next. And no, I'm not talking about the UK Duchess that smashed everyone away yet again at the Royal Variety performance in another outstanding glittery dress that we have actually seen before when she was on the tour of Pakistan. William in another velvet jacket. I'm loving this look. My husband's getting one for Christmas, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> But she looked absolutely gorgeous. So Catherine made worldwide news, all for the right reasons. 
but the US Duchess, not so much. There was one story, however, that she did tell Ellen that I was like, yeah, this does actually resonate with me now, Megan, watching what you're up to right now. And that was when she was a young girl, she wanted to do her hair like Andy McDowell in Four Weddings and a Funeral, but she ended up looking like Krusty the Clown. Needless to say, the one thing that clearly this interview has shown that Megan is definitely still a clown. Now, I never used to watch Ellen, and I'm not about to start now in her last season, but I am aware of the pranks and people come on and they do silly things. And it's like impractical jokers, Ellen makes them jump, people spring out of the sofa, but also where they go out and they have to follow Ellen's instructions. So I was aware that this is quite a normal segment on Ellen's show. However, this has to be, from what I've seen, the most embarrassing segment that Ellen has ever done on this. I literally cannot believe what I saw happening. It What makes it worse is this is not a comedy TV actress. This is not someone really funny, a stand-up comedian, someone that's known for laughing and joking at herself. This is a woman in the last few weeks that has demanded an audience with politicians. This is a woman that wants to be part of a policy-making decision with female senators. This is a woman that wrote a letter to Congress to be taken seriously. This is a woman that is obviously obviously has designs about going into a political career. This is also a woman that demands that people call her Duchess, that she's got to keep the links to the royal family. I actually had a moment, a moment where I felt sorry for her. Yes, because I thought that Ellen was completely making her look a total fool. Many people have said, and I actually agree with this, Kim Kardashian or any of the Kardashians. Kim recently dressed up as a Disney princess, Princess Jasmine, and did a skit with Pete Davidson. Would say no to doing this. That's the level of humiliation that this was. It was so cringe. From putting on kitten ears and prancing about meowing, okay, I thought that was bad. Rubbing crystals on her face because she said that she had healing powers. Okay, that was cringe. The fact that she bought a security guard on set was cringe. I mean, who does that? All of the famous people that appear on Ellen, she's got a security guard with her. What did she think those vendors were going to do? Mug her or bash her over the head with a crystal? That, as I said, was an absolute level of diva, I am important. But when you think it can't get worse, it did get worse. She was munching down on chili chips like a chipmunk. She then drank because she had some hot sauce. She did a little hot, hot, hot dance. And then she drank from a baby bottle saying that mama needed some milk. That in itself had me biting down so hard on my lower jaw, I knew enough ground through my teeth. But for me, the ultimate humiliating moment that I still cannot believe that she did was a drop and squat. I cannot actually believe that she did this. Megan, at eight months pregnant, actually managed to squat to the ground with her knees together and looked more elegant and ladylike. But this leg spread drop and squat. I'm still open mouthed that she would do that. As I said, there was a tiny bit of me that actually was mortified for her. Hiding behind a cushion like watching a horror film was probably a more accurate description of what this invoked in me watching this. Ellen was very much the puppeteer here and I still cannot believe that Megan actually stooped so low, how low can you go, to actually go along with everything that Ellen did. It was completely humiliating. Being able to poke fun at yourself and being able to laugh at yourself and you don't want people taking you too seriously is one thing. However, to take it to the level that Megan went, which is to make herself look like a total fool, don't expect anyone to ever take you seriously ever again. In fact, if Megan does ever try to run in politics, I would love to see this squat picture circulated in the pamphlets that are posted around people's houses. Please vote <laughs> for the squatting duchess. Oh dear, she literally does not help herself. Anyway, guys, I will be back with you very soon. Take care for now. Bye. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please, angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers the time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.